So in today's video, we are gonna be looking at this image and I'm going to be breaking it down from behind the scenes, how I created it, what went into it, what my thought process was. It may look simple, but there's actually so much more that went into this than what you may imagine. Hey there, I'm Caitlin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a place where we like to empower photographers to build profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in on the behind the scenes of our everyday life. Today's episode is the beginning of a new series where we're letting you see behind the scenes of certain images that I'm shooting at real wedding days, real shoots, and I'm gonna break down how I actually created them. So KJ All Access members actually get spoiled with these nuggets every single month. Hours of footage, watching me shoot, watching me learn myself, watching me fix mistakes, watching me find creative ideas. They learn from behind the scenes and we decided to give our YouTube channel, our YouTube audience, just a little bit of that behind the scenes goodness because we have found that the best way to learn as a photographer, whether you are old and need new inspiration or brand new and you need to learn how to actually do this as a professional, the best way to learn is to watch someone else do it. And so we're going to bring you along for the ride. So if you like this type of education, you really appreciate these videos, you're gaining a lot of education from them, make sure you subscribe because you will see them happening on this channel on a regular basis. Also, if you really love them and you want to have access to hours of this content new every single month, we actually have a free trial of KJ All Access linked below. You can give it a shot, see if it's for you, and have tons of this type of education to watch um, while you're doing your everyday photography work. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you behind the scenes of me photographing this image. But before we dive into that clip, I want to break down what is happening here. So this was an engagement session on a rainy summer day super humid, super hot. I was super pregnant, um, but it was really interesting because we were shooting around a museum and there were great aspects of this museum and this location. Like there was a kind of a white wall we shot in front of that was beautiful, but there was nothing about this location that was soft or romantic. It was a lot of like harsh kind of cold buildings with like clean cut lines in the grass. There was nothing tall, like no tall weeds or any type of foliage to kind of stand in. So we're gonna dive in, you're gonna watch this and see what it took to create a soft image in a really dull, flat, kind of boring location. So roll the clip, Ty. So let me look through this really quick because we walked up this way and I'm like, I think I could make this work. <laughs> um, so I will have you go stand not on the bricks pathway, but that's like as far back as you will go. So if you want to go stand like on this path, but right where the brick is meeting and I'll see what it looks like. Um, so in my mind, I'm trying to find a softener. So I'm going to create a foreground with this hydrangea bush in order to soften them. The tricky part with a background is trying to make them um, stand somewhere where their feet aren't wet in the wet grass, but also not in the main path because of all the people walking in the background. So I'm trying to get them a little bit on that side path. I'm also trying to figure out what lens to use. I'm also trying to figure out what my aperture needs to be to make the foreground blurry um, and still be able to focus well on them. And I'm trying to find a place in the bush where the flowers will just naturally frame them, like the shape of the flowers will naturally frame them. So um, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot to think about. But overall, the reason I'm doing this is just because everything that we photographed up until this point was with like a white cinder block building. Everything was beautiful, but it was clean and it was clean cut. It was There was nothing soft romantic about it at all. And so I'm trying to give them a soft romantic look. And this is the best I could come up with. Jazz Leah can look down over her shoulder and I'm going to have you do a little, you know, looking over like that. He's nuzzling in. Okay, just like, oh my gosh, yes. You can move her hair, Hunter, and put your nose right on her temple. There you go, yes, perfect. Couple more, almost done. And hold it, two more seconds. And you can relax. Let me just make sure they are super sharp and that I love them. Okay, that's perfect. I'm gonna do one more, but I'm gonna have you come even closer. In other words, they weren't tax sharp. So let's do something a little different and try again. <laughs> that's that's the code word for I need to do it again because it's not sharp like oh let me try something new come a little closer uh, I'm sure they were fine but I am very picky about sharp images and so um, sometimes with the mark IV um, I struggle to get tack sharp images of my clients with an 85 with them far away um, it, it wasn't always a struggle but in this situation I remember it being a little bit frustrating um, so I'm having Michael hold another piece of a hydrangea so that I have some soft oh 
See, I think that's a win. Considering where we were shooting, that's a win. Very soft, really romantic. I'm blurring out everything that could be a distraction, and I'm giving them kind of a, a more feminine take on this like very harsh walkway. So good. Okay, so this is the final image. And when I look at this image, there's a few things that I need to point out. So first of all, if you see this background area, the reason why it looks like it is right behind their heads is because I was photographing this with an 85 millimeter. I love my 85. I have videos about it. I'm obsessed with it. I will never not use this lens in my career. I have to have it. And the reason why I love it is because it creates these visual kind of compressed, compacted layers within my portraits, and it allows me to do so many creative things. So because I was using the 85, it makes the background look like it's right against their heads. It also makes the foreground, all of this, look like it's right up against them as well. So I'm kind of sandwiching my clients within these two different realms of really blurry, beautiful bokeh, and that is one of my favorite things about using this lens. So if I was using the 35 millimeter, this background would look as far back as that tree actually was, um, and it's not gonna give you the same look. Even using a 50 millimeter is not quite the same. Sometimes I don't have a, enough distance from the couple or from my clients to use a 50 millimeter, or to use an 85 millimeter, so I use a 50 millimeter. Um, but in this case, this was a great, great scenario to use my 85. So I love that. Something else I want you to pay attention to is the fact that I was positioning myself at a certain angle um, to look at my clients from this way, I'm not seeing the whole sidewalk here, and I'm seeing trees behind their head um, instead of this open sky. And that is really important because if I was twisted just a little bit more to my left, you would have seen people walking in the background, trash cans, park benches, um, some of the signs that were in the museum property. So twisting this way was really important. And those are little decisions that I'm making that I don't even think about anymore. But when I really break down, why did this image turn out the way it did? It's because all these things are happening subconsciously in my mind. And as you start to name them and show them and explain them, other photographers like you can be able to notice this when you're actually shooting yourself. So something else I wanted to point out was that you saw Michael, I had him hold up an additional piece of a flower. Um, and I do this all the time. And sometimes it happens because I look through my lens and I can tell like, this is great. I found a little pocket. Like when, I, when I'm looking through uh, this bush, I'm looking for a way to encompass and surround my client. That's something I'm always looking for. But sometimes I don't have quite enough surrounding petals to make it work. So here I found this opening, like you can see this surrounding. So I decided to put my couple right in the middle of that opening, but there wasn't enough quite there um, to make the full wrap. So I asked Michael to add a little bit more to the side and this was Michael's flower, all right? So that flower just add a little bit extra uh, softening to the edge and it made my com composition look that much stronger. So when I think about this, in the realm of figuring out where to place your client for foreground, I'm looking for a space where they can fit into, but now I gotta decide how much of their body am I gonna show, all right? How much am I gonna show? Am I gonna push them all the way back and have their feet showing, or am I gonna pull them closer and crop up at the waist? And a lot of times in these type of scenarios, I like to crop up at the waist because when you crop up at the waist, the closer your subject is, the more blurry the background is. If they were standing all the way back here, then this background wouldn't be as blurry. This side, side ground, that's not what you call it, but you get what I'm saying. This area would not be as blurry and the impact of the 85 millimeter lens would not be utilized to the best of its ability. So just the concept of pulling them closer and cropping like at the knee and above, really cropping kind of at the thigh because that's where the foreground is starting. That is a significant decision that really plays into the overall look of the image. So if you're wondering why I originally had them further away and then brought them closer, this is why. And, and honestly, when I brought them closer, I don't think I was thinking of all the different concepts of like, I want higher compression, I want to crop here, just visually, it didn't make sense to me and it didn't look good to me. So that's how I adjusted it. But now that I'm back home and I'm watching the behind the scenes video, I can tell you that subconsciously that's what was going on in my brain. That's why I like this so much better. So anyway, I'm, I'm kind of learning myself as I think through, why did I make that decision? Let me try to explain that to these photographers. So um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that ideally, if I could make this better, if I could change something about this, um, I would ideally not have this pocket of openness. I think. Um, it's fine. It doesn't devalue 
you know, the image, um, but I don't love it. I would love that better if there were just, you know, a full spread of leaves there. Uh, another thing that I kind of wish was a little different, but again, I'm just being picky. Um, this is pretty dark for me. These are some dark holes um, and that's a really dark tree. So I kind of wish I had the ability to have a brighter background behind his head. Um, I could have photoshopped out that sign. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but if I could have twisted a little bit and avoided trash cans, benches, things I mentioned before, I could have used the line of the sidewalk a little bit more as a stronger composition if it had been um, hiding so much from the florals right here. But overall, this was a win for me because I spent the whole beginning of the shoot thinking to myself, I gotta do something different. I gotta do something that I'm that I'm proud of. And I don't know about you, but as a photographer, there are certain images that I shoot that make me feel like, I'm killing it. I'm doing it. This is great. And I didn't have that moment until I shot this image. So this image helped me get to a place where I felt confident in the rest of the shoot. And that's good because it started pouring down rain as soon as their second outfit was changed into. I would encourage you, if you're a photographer and you've never taken the time to think critically about why certain images worked so well for you and why certain images didn't, you should take some time to do that with your own work because it's actually eye-opening. It's eye-opening for me to think through. Like for the first time I'm realizing like, wow, I really did pull them forward because it's a compositional um, layering, visual layering issue that I didn't get when they were pulled back and I've just never thought of it that way. So it it is really powerful to take your work and really dissect it um, and to really use that as a tool to grow and to get better and better as a photographer and to learn your craft more. So I'm thrilled that we got to start the series. I'm excited about it. If you like it, you found it beneficial. There's things you'd like to see. There's things you like more of. There's things you don't understand. Please leave comments below and I'd love to answer them and create more content like this for you in the future. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss videos in the future and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.